Hi, I'm Bob the Mortgage Coach Mitchell, and today we're gonna to be talking about income qualifying for a house, to buy a house, particularly if you're having trouble income qualifying to buy a house, what are some of your options? Okay, well the first option that I'm gonna I'm gonna go over with you is I'm gonna to wanna to look at your debt service. What are you currently making house payments, or what are you currently making payments on, and can we do anything about it? Okay, for example, let's say that you have um, an expensive car note. Okay, I did. I tried to do a mortgage for a lady not that long ago, and she made in like the mid 40s, but she had a $950 a month car note. It's not unusual with as, as expensive as cars have gotten um, to have a seven, eight, nine hundred dollar a month car note. Anyway, in this particular lady's situation, it precluded her from being able to buy the house that she wanted to buy. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's look at your debt service. Okay, do you have a car note? If you have a big car note, do you have enough equity in that car to be able to sell it and pay the loan off? Um, if you're underwater on it, that's not necessarily an option. So, um, you know, or if you do, you, if, you, if it's a short sale, you might have to make an arrangement with the lender to where you continue making payments on the, on the remainder that was left. Uh, and I have to, in as long as I can document that, that's all fine and Jim Dandy to do. I just have to document what the payments are and how long it's going to be and that sort of thing. And I have to factor those into your ratios. But if you're getting rid of a $950 a month car note and instead you're just going to have a $100 a month signature loan with your credit union while you take care of the deficiency on, the, uh, on what the car was, that still might be an option, that sort of thing. Um, if you have a bunch of different things that you have financed, uh, I did a loan not that terribly long ago for a guy that had uh, two or three car notes. He had two motorcycle payments. He had a camper payment. He had balances on five or six different charge cards. Um, it wasn't surprising that he, he was having difficulty income qualifying. So what we did to get him into the house was I sent him to his credit union and he did a debt consolidation loan. Um, I think he took a couple of the motorcycles. I think he took both of the motorcycles and he put it in there. He put all of his charge cards in there. He refinanced his car to a lower payment. Um, he took it back out to like 72 or 80 months or something. So he got it. He, he got his car payment down and he got a debt consolidation loan, which paid off the minimum payments on those. It, it paid off the charge cards so he didn't have to use each one of those minimum payments against them. And he got rid of his motorcycle notes. We were able to get him into the house. So that's the number one thing I'm going to say is let's really see what we can work with for just you. But let's say that that's just not going to happen. Um, it's just too difficult. Um, the other thing we can look at is getting a non-occupant co-borrower. Now, notice I said non-occupant co-borrower and not a co-signer because in mortgages, we don't really have co-signers. We have non-occupant co-borrowers. The basic difference is, is that the non-occupant co-borrower is going to be on the title to your property. Okay, so that's, you know, something to consider. You got to trust the person, you know, they're going to, they're going to be a co-owner with you just as if they, they are, they're going to own, uh, you know, whatever percentage undivided interest in the property. So you need to make sure that you're comfortable with that person. But anyway, and mortgages know that we have non-occupant co-borrowers, not co-signers. Okay. Um, a non-occupant co-borrower, um, depending on the program, uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac treat them a little bit different. Uh, they have slight differences in their guidelines. For example, Freddie Mac will allow the, co the borrower to actually have a zero income. I did a loan like that a few years ago where they got, actually gotten turned down at another lender who's trying to take them Fannie Mae, and Fannie Mae won't allow them to have a zero income. Okay, Freddie Mac, on the other hand, will allow them to have zero income and let all the income come from the non-occupant co-borrower. Okay, that's how we were able to get this guy into his house. Okay. Anyway, um, again, I'm not, I don't want to go into the weeds too much on the, on the underwriting guidelines, but basically one of the things that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to be pretty much related to the person who's the non-occupant co-borrower. FHA will allow you to have a non-occupant co-borrower who you're not related to. And when I say related to, I mean by either blood, by marriage, or by law. For example, a foster child. Okay, uh, say your, your foster child is the one that's trying to buy the house. Um, well, technically you're not related to them, but due to the nature of your relationship and by law, you are related to them, so we can use that. But even with FHA, even if you're not related at all, as long as you can document a close relationship, okay, uh, I, I did one where the borrower had grown up 
and actually lived in the person's house for like the last five years before they went away to college. We never did anything official with an adoption or anything along those lines, but we were able to substantiate that the person lived in the house while they were going to high school and that sort of thing. We were able to get it done. So again, I don't want to go too far into the details. I just want you to know that if you're having trouble, difficulty, income qualifying to buy the house, there are some options. Reach out to me or reach out to another qualified loan officer to find out what your options are, what the different program guidelines are, how we might be able to squeeze you into that mortgage. So if you have any questions, if I could be of service to you in any way, please feel free to reach out to me in the comments or you can go to the website and drop me an email or you can give me a call. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. No, no pressure, no obligation whatsoever. Um, if you're in a state other, I'm only licensed in North Carolina, so if you're in another state, I'd be happy to refer you to a loan officer in another state um, that might be able to help you with this sort of situation. So anyway, I'm Bob the Mortgage Coach Mitchell. Please know that if there's will, generally there's a way. Um, now let's put you into a house.